Hello, everyone. This is a pivot table. You may have used one of these if you had to summarize large quantities of data. But there is another tool that can do much more than the regular pivot table. Introducing the tool. But wait, you'll say, isn't this the same pivot table? Just the calculated field is grayed out. This is a power pivot. And as you will see in this video, it may look similar to a regular pivot table, but its functioning and calculation possibilities are at another level. I will show you three benefits of using power pivots, so stay tuned till the end of the video to find out what this technology can do for you. The first benefit of power pivots is at the data source level. My data is in three different tables. The first table has the product information, the second has the sales amount, and the third has the price. It is quite common for many companies nowadays that the data comes from different softwares or databases and has to be put together first before being analyzed. My goal is to get the correct average price per product, not product ID. At the same time, each product was sold with different amounts per price during the year, meaning that I also need to consider the sales units in the calculation. To create a regular pivot table, I would need to join all three tables together, for example, using a formula with the XLOOKUP function. To allocate the price information to the correct sales units, I would even need to use XLOOKUP with two conditions. In this formula, the first condition is for matching the product ID. And the second for the quarter of the year. Both conditions need to be true so that their product is also true or equal to 1. And 1 is the lookup value. The prices are returned from the price column of table 3. Please note that I'm using structural references because I have tables. You can convert a data range to a table by clicking on it and pressing Ctrl and T together. Only after performing all these steps, I can apply the pivot table. I actually don't need to do all this for the power pivot. Let's first enable the power pivot by going to the File tab, Options, Add Ins. In the Manage drop down list, choose Com Add Ins. Click Go. And make sure that Microsoft Power Pivot for Excel is checked. To create a power pivot, I will need to add these tables to a data model. There are two ways to do this. In the Power Pivot tab, I can either click on Add to Data Model, or as an alternative, I could have added a pivot table and checked the box Add this data to the data model. After adding the other two tables to the data model as well, I need to create relationships between them. A relationship is necessary to tell the data model which rows of two tables correspond to one another. To build a relationship between two tables, they have to have a column with common entries like for example product ID in sales information and product information tables, and at least one of the tables in that column has to have unique entries with no duplicates and no blanks. So in this case you can just drag product ID 
from one table to the next. To create a relationship, this is a so-called one-to-many relationship because the first table, which contains only product information, has unique product IDs, whereas the second table, which contains the sales unit's information, has duplicated product IDs because each product was sold in each quarter of the year. So now the question is how to connect the second and third tables because the product ID and quarter of year columns in both of these tables contain duplicated entries. This would be a so-called many-to-many relationship, but Power Pivot, unlike Power BI, does not support it, and neither supports relationships based on multiple columns. So we will need helper tables with unique entries. I already have one, which is table 1, and I will make one more for the quarters. You can convert a data range to a table by clicking on it and pressing Ctrl and T together. Now I just need to create relationships between the two helper tables containing attribute information, which are also called dimensions, and tables 3 and 2 that contain the actual numbers, which are also called the fact tables. The small arrow shows the direction in which the filter will be applied. And add a pivot table. If the fields for the values area come from both fact tables, like here, then the fields for the rows area have to come from the dimension tables because dimension tables filter both fact tables, and fact tables don't filter one another. The same principle will also apply to a slicer. The second benefit of a power pivot is a broader range of possible calculations as compared to a regular pivot table. Let's consider the example of average prices. If I add price to a regular pivot table, then the most logical way to display it would be an average. But the displayed price per snack is just a simple average. It is the sum of the four prices divided by four. This cannot be the correct average price per snack because different amounts of the product were sold at each price. And the real average price of snack A has to be closer to 3, because that's the price at which the most sales units were sold. So we need the weighted average that takes into account the sales units. To calculate the weighted average, each price has to be multiplied by its sales units, and then the product has to be summed up and divided by the total number of sales units. It is equivalent to calculating the total revenue and dividing it by the total sales volume. You could argue that we could add a calculated field to calculate the revenue by multiplying the sales units by price for each quarter of the year. And divide the total revenue for each snack by the total number of sales units to get the correct average price. But that's not what the pivot table does. In fact, the total revenue is too high, and it is not the sum of the revenues for each quarter. Let's take a look at snack A as an example. Instead of performing a row-by-row -row multiplication and then summing up the product, the pivot table sums up the sales units then it sums up the prices and then multiplies the two sums to get the revenue. In this way, the revenue is too high and does not correspond to the sum of the revenues of the quarters per snack. So what I can do is go to the original table, which is the source of the pivot table, add a column for the revenue, call it sales value,
Refresh the pivot table to add the new column. And then divide sales value by sales units to get the weighted average price. And look, now it is correct. For snack A, it is actually close to 3. You won't have this problem with a power pivot, because it calculates in a different way. A power pivot uses so-called DAX formulas. DAX formulas work with the tables that were loaded into the data model, and they are much more flexible than the rigid calculation rules of regular pivot tables. In the meantime, I change the names of the tables. The two filtering dimension tables are product, which was table 1, and quarter, which was table 4. And the filtered fact tables are price, which was table 3, and units, which was table 2. As explained earlier, there is no direct relationship between price and units. To calculate the revenue and then the weighted average price, I'm going to add a measure. I want it to be in the units table. The measure name will be revenue. And I'll start writing the DAX formula. I need a function for summing up the results of a row-by-row row multiplication. But the sum dax function will add all the numbers in a column. So I need another one, which is sum x, which returns the sum of an expression evaluated for each row in a table. The syntax of this function asks for one table as a first argument. But as we remember, units and prices are in different tables. I'm going to provide units as a table argument, and now I need to provide the expression. So the sales units need to be multiplied by the corresponding prices to calculate revenue. But the prices are in a different table, and there's no direct relationship between price and units tables. To overcome the lack of a direct relationship between the tables, we will need the function calculate. This function can change the filter context, so it can apply filters to the expression in its first argument. As the first argument, I'm going to provide the values function, which will return the prices from the price table when the following filters apply. Next, I'm going to use the filter function, which will only return the rows from the price table where the product ID is going to match the product ID in the units table, and the quarter of the year will match the quarter of the year in the units table. The two ampersands between the conditions mean that both of these conditions have to apply at the same time. Click OK. And the revenue is correct. Let's copy the formula for revenue. And to calculate the average price, I will need to divide it by the sum of sales units from the units table.
and the average prices are also correct. So as you saw in this video, DAX and data modeling do need some additional learning and time investment. But that's where we get to the third benefit of Power Pivots. There are three concepts that you can find both in Excel and Power BI. Data Modeling, DAX, and Power Query. And two of these can be practiced using Power Pivots. So if you invest your time in practicing these concepts in Excel and also learn Power Query, then it will be very easy for you to transition to Power BI later on. So what do you think? Does a regular pivot table have benefits compared to a power pivot? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you like this video, please like and subscribe for more contents like this.